So my name is Stefan Schürger. I'm account manager for Toradex and I welcome you to our leveraging system on modules in the development of HMI and M2M solutions for super electric cars. Sounds very sexy. So all this is done um, based on the hardware of Toradex and I just want to give you in a very short summary, uh, short overview about the company Toradex. After that I hand over to Thomas Love who is from Remac and he will show you the details. So sorry that we start a little bit later, but uh, we see that we get through. So uh, do you know Toradex or who of you knows Toradex? Okay, great. <laughs> That's very good. So those people who does not know, um, just some examples here. So what we see out there in life and reality, that's the demo from Remac from the electric supercar. Uh, there's also a very nice uh, demo from a, a technology, which you can also see here. And uh, we have the fast boot demo, which is based on Toradex hardware. And we have a charging demo, which is also uh, together with Qt. Um, so all together, um, Toradex was founded in 2003. It's a Swiss company uh, in Luzern. Uh, we uh, brought up the first product in 2005 uh, on the embedded world. It's uh, the Colibri PXA270. And we very quickly uh, established a global footprint. So we have over 10 legal entities. We have direct sales. And uh, our main products are based on NVIDIA and NXP. So uh, we have two complementary pin-compatible families. Um, the one is called Apalis. It's in a bigger form factor. And it has high-speed interface support with PCI Express, uh, gigabit Ethernet SATA, and so on. Um, and there's a smaller form factor, which is called Colibri. And uh, it has the standard interfaces and is more for battery-driven and uh, power-efficient uh, applications suitable. Uh, we have, uh, as a unique selling point, we have a long-term availability of more than 10 years. Uh, we have shock and vibrant resistant form factors, and uh, the products are proven in thousands of applications. Uh, this is the summary of Toradex uh, showing the unique selling points. So uh, we have uh, local support. All the hardware is designed in Switzerland and manufactured in Germany. We have local stock, so normally you can buy the products directly off the shelf. Uh, all the pricing is published online, uh, up to 500 pieces. If you have more, uh, please come to me and request for a quote. All the families are pin compatible within and software compatible. Uh, we mainly offer from our side uh, Yocto Linux and uh, Windows CE. Of course, also together with Qt. And uh, yeah, so... We have the long-term availability and we have free lifetime maintenance support uh, on our hardware and software that we deliver with the product. And with all that together, we hope to have the highest customer satisfaction. And on my last slide already, um, there are just some exp um, examples of products that we serve uh, from the car on the left side, from Remark, of course, to drones, whatever. So we, uh, our main markets are medical, laboratory, test measurement, industrial automation, robotics, and so on. Uh, we have over 3,000 customers worldwide, and our project volumes that we see are up to 50,000 pieces per year, uh, where it's uh, up to the customer to make the make or buy decision. And that's it. So any questions so far? Okay, great. So then I will hand over. Thomas Love, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Tomislav Lugaric and I'm the senior software engineer at Trimac Automobili. So for starters, I will do a short introduction of our company. So the story of our company started as a garage project in 2007 with retrofitting this BMW to electric propulsion. Two years later, we founded the company and immediately started breaking all the records. 
So until April 2011, we had five international records while the team was still very small. However, what was recognized very soon was that we basically, not much of the BMW was left and we made a new car. So we decided to really make a new car from scratch, which is why Concept One was introduced at Frankfurt the same year. We started producing the car officially in 2013 and also we started doing uh, technical projects for other customers. So one really special project for us was the Tajima E-Runner, very powerful car made for Pikes Peak Race. We also decided to introduce the sportier version of our car, the 1200 horsepower Concept S, which was introduced at Geneva, and also some other successes that we have had over the years. We are a partner on the Koenigs Aggregera project. We are producing the batteries. Also, this year we have managed to establish a distributor network worldwide. And the latest success was becoming a partner on the Aston Mountain Valkyrie project. Of course, there are other projects which I'm not at liberty to discuss, but I hope that uh, you will soon hear about them. So we are mostly recognized by our products, the cars and the electric bikes. However, we are not a car manufacturer, but we are primarily a technology company doing solutions for various OEMs, which range from propulsions, batteries, and last but not least, the infotainment system, which you can see on the bottom of these screens. So basically, when you are developing such an infotainment system for high-end cars, you really need to have a well streamlined production and a good product to base it off. There are many challenges associated with them. On one end, you have a multitude of interfaces you need to connect to, such as CAN bus, CAN bus connecting to every computer in the car, the GPS interfaces, modem for USB connectivity, and on the other, you have the different projects which may require you to have the same hardware but run radically different uh, interfaces. On the IVI computer, which is on the central screen, there is again the same problem, only in this one, apart from having various screens, you also have the issue that you may have more functionality, such as integrating Bluetooth or integrating the M2M solution so the car can be tracked from the factory at all times. So basically the challenges that we faced, first we have numerous classes of functionality, so the single computer may need to run a video streaming, control of the car, logging of data, showing it all to the driver, also all the interfaces that are needed. We need to interface to the web, to the mobile application, to every ECU that is in the car. And also, as soon as you get connectivity requirements, you also get the security requirements. So that is also something that we are battling with on a day-to-day -day basis. And needless to say, everything is project specific because the vendor comes, sees our car and says, I want these five functionalities, I don't want these three, and I want two specials. So basically every car is a different challenge. So the, we decided to build our hardware on top of the Apalis IMX6 module, which uh, we chose because it is a rather it's a rather good system on module, which is, uh, it has a lot of features. We have the storage on board, we have a good graphics card, we have audio processing, and with using breakout boards, either provided by Toradex or developed by ourselves, we can also add various functionalities like the GPS, like interfacing to the camera or interfacing to the modem. This is also complemented by the software stack, which is based, as Stefan already said, it is based on uh, Linux. We have the Pocky reference implementation, which provides us all the baseline tools that you need in every standard Linux distribution. Toradex is then responsible for producing all the layers that are needed to support their hardware. On top of that is added boot to Qt, which gives us all the libraries and allows us easy updating when new versions come around. And of course, on top of that, we have our own concept embedded Linux layer, which has all the configurations, the security, and, of and all the add-ons that we need internally. So basically some 
some of the features that are important with using the operating system are various customizations. Since we have a lot of low volume projects, it is unfeasible for us to have uh, many operating system and many devices. So we always have device the same device, the same operating system, which is simply customized for different purposes. So for example, the first, uh, the first layer that really gives us good customization possibilities is uh, the U-boot environment that's provided, which allows us, we can, before boot, we can switch on and off different devices which are on the board, whether they need to be or don't need to be used, or maybe if they are not present in the hardware configuration, we can at boot time script it to turn it on and off. We can also detect which devices are available for boot. We can uh, do some kind of device description. For example, in the U-boot environment, we can simply write, this is central screen, this is uh, version two of our display, this is passed to the operating system, and the operating system can take care of the rest. We have also managed to use the options for, since we have option to boot from internal hard drive over a network or SD card, we have used it so on the internal hard drive we have the production image that is used in the car. Network boot and SD card boots are used as diagnostic interfaces which we can use to boot and load a pre-compiled image. Also, uh, when starting Linux, uh, uh, since it is based on systemd initialization in newer versions, this allows us to pick up the configuration from the U-boot environment, and we can easily uh, configure the device for specific network configuration, start or not start specific interfaces, and also check if all files are necessary, so we either do start or do not start the IVI if it is present or not in the image. Uh, since everything is provided as bit bake scripts, it allows us to easily automate all the build process. So we can simply start the process. When it is built, it is automatically deployed to our network system. And then with network boot, which is pre-configured on the device, we can easily, with a, single with a single script, we can load the operating system onto the device and immediately get with, on with the development. So when we do development in-house, we typically deploy, let's call it a vanilla OS, which doesn't have any IVI software. And all our developers have pre-configured uh, IDEs, Qt creators, which allow them to simply check out the project and with a single click, they can deploy it to the device and immediately test it. And one, once this is done, we can then do a second build, which already has the IVI built in and rapidly deployed to a uh, to an, any number of units that's required for a specific project. So basically, just to sum up what uh, cooperation with Toradex and their SOMs mean for us, we, since we have uh, this Linux-based operating system, we can easily customize it for any number of applications. So we do not have to have 10 images. We can have only one image and ship it for everything. Uh, the modular architecture, which allows us to turn on or off specific uh, parts of the operating system, allows us so we can easily and quickly tailor the project for any OEM. The SOM so far has covered literally every hardware requirement that we had, so that is, that is a really good starting point for future projects. And as with Linux being Linux, it is really easy to add another components, or if we have a problem in the Linux kernel, either we can work with Toradex, with Qt, or sol solve it ourselves. We never have a problem that the code is intransparent and we cannot access it. Of course, since everything is run with Qt, uh, and we, have good we can achieve good separation of business logic from presentation logic, so on one side, once we once we solve all the problems with the, the operating system, so we adapt it either for IMX6 chip or some other chip, there is literally no reconfiguration that needs to be done on the IVI so it can run on the new chip. And also on the other side, we can use the same IVI base, just replace the QML and the presentation layer, and we instantly get uh, an IVI which can be shipped to another customer and match the design of their vehicle. And that is conclusion of my presentation. So if there are any questions, please. Any 
question? Mm, maybe it's not an appropriate question, but um, I'm, since you're shipping in many open source components, Linux kernel and whatnot, um, it's maybe a hard question for a developer. Um, how do you handle compliance with all this license stuff? Uh, the compliance with license stuff. Well, uh, mo uh, we uh, we when whenever we integrate new uh, software components into our system, we always check if they are either licensed commercially. Like for example, for Qt, we have a commercial license, and all the open source components that we are pulling from various repositories, we always make sure that they are not GPL but LGPL, since LGPL allows you to use open source components but doesn't do the thing that's called uh, GPL, uh, GPL contamination. So when you pull in a LGPL component, you have to say that you are using it and you have to provide the source of that component, but you can link it against your binary and you do not have to disclose the source code of your binary. This is of course not, um, but um, I don't know if um, some sort of um, update me mechanism in your product and when you're shipping GPL version free binaries, you also require to give hints to the user how to probably update it. And it's, it's quite, I think, complicated in our car environment or let the user install then their own binaries on the system. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now you have now now you have caught me a little bit unprepared. So yeah, we are still we are still investigating how to best handle this since uh, we are right now in negotiations with a few vendors which will which we uh, uh, which will assist us in uh, developing the over the air update solution. But uh, as for installing components on our IVI systems. Uh, our IVI systems, when we ship them, we ship them close to the user. So the user can interact with them, but we do not let them log into them and install various software because here, apart from complying with LGPL requirements, we also have to comply with various automotive safety regulations yeah. and... Of course, yeah, uh, thank you for the elaboration. Yeah. Any other question? Then thank you very much. Thank you.